Okay, what we want to do in this video is introduce us to this relatively simple concept, which I think you're going to really understand intuitively, but it's called a movement along the demand curve. Okay, so obviously we're still talking about demand. We've got the nine central concepts um, um, in our mind, and we've also got the first real world issue, which is how the producers and consumers maximize their objectives or try to achieve their objectives to the best of their ability. All right. Now, the first thing is the demand curve. Okay, so the definition for this is this shows the relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity that is bought. Obviously it says demanded here but the quantity that is bought and it is normally downward sloping. Not always but still. When we are talking about demand and I will say or any fact, anything in economics, anything in economics, whatever we're talking about, it's implied that a cetris paribus relationship exists or a cetris paribus condition exists and what that means is all things, all other things being equal, unchanged the same. So in economics, we are trying to ascertain the effect of a change in one variable on another variable. So what we're doing in this now is we're trying to um, uh, find out what happens when price changes what happens to quantity demanded when price changes. So the change in price, that's one change in one variable, and how does that affect another variable, which in this case is quantity demanded. Okay, so keep that in mind, please, please, please. Now, not the logic doesn't, but um, what we are moving on to is this idea of the law of demand. So as the price of a good falls, the quantity demanded will normally increase. What this means is as the price goes down, people tend to buy more. Okay, as the price goes up, people tend to buy less. And I've already said this, as the price goes down, people tend to buy more. And that just makes sense to you intuitively. If something becomes cheaper, and I've often used the example of a Ferrari, if the Ferrari went from $250,000 down to $1, I guarantee you a lot more people would own Ferraris, okay? Now, looking at the demand curve and remembering when we're in econom or in microeconomics, excuse me, as we are now, we have the rule of 11. But we can't do that because we don't have a supply curve, so we just put in what we can. Now, what we are saying here is thus. We have the demand curve, we have price with the currency, we have the origin, we have the thousands of units per week um, uh, and the quantity, we have the title, we have the D1, okay? Now, what we're saying is, in order to find out the amount amount of this good, it, what it is is irrelevant, we might as well say t-shirts, ice cream cones, I do not care. The amount of this good that is bought at price P1, what, whatever that price is, if, if you don't like the letters, think that this is 10 dollars, 10 euro, whatever, or 10 euro because we're using euro here. So we go out from this price P1, 10 euro, touch the demand curve and down. That tells us the exact amount that is purchased of this good here, t-shirts, at a price P1, $10. Now, if the price falls, we know from the law of demand that more will be purchased. Well, how do we show this graphically? And this, by the way, is something that some students can get uh, confused about. Well, we go out uh, from the price, we touch the demand curve, go down, and this is the second quantity. This is the quantity that is demanded or bought at price P2. Now, the thing is, the fact that Q2 is further to the right than Q1 means that Q2 is a bigger or larger quantity of t-shirts than Q1 is. So as the price fell, consumers purchased more. Now, I know I'm going slow, but this is intentional. We start off here at this price, let's say it's uh, 5 euro, and then price rises up to P2, which is 10 euro. Well, how do we find out the amount that is purchased at price P2 or P1 for that matter? We go out to the demand curve, touch it and go down, and we get the quantity Q2. The fact that quantity Q2 is less than Q1, is to the left of Q1, I'm getting ahead of myself, means that Q2 is less than Q1. Q2 is the quantity of this good t-shirts that is purchased at price P2. Excuse me. Q1 is the price or the quantity of this good t-shirts that is purchased at price P1. Now, what I want you to see is that whether the price rises or falls, the demand curve is always downward sloping. That gives us the law of demand. In later videos, we'll go into horrifically technical reasons why, but I do hope to make it easy to understand. Now, let's talk about the demand curve. What does it show? The relationship between the price of a good or service and the quantity that is bought. It is normally downward sloping. The downward sloping part gives us the law of demand. Okay, now the definition in here, but the law of demand tells us the quantity that is bought depends on the price. As the price changes, people change the amount that they buy. And we know from the law of demand, as the price rises, people buy less. 
okay and as the price falls people buy more now when price changes this brings us on to something very important there is a change that we refer to a, a change in price as a movement along the demand curve so only a change in price can cause a movement. Anything else that affects the amount that people buy is called a shift, which is going to be looked at in the next video. So I'm doing the exact same thing, a downward sloping demand curve. Whether the price rises or falls, a downward sloping demand curve shows that the good obeys the law of demand. As price rises, people buy more. That's wrong. As price rises, people buy less. As price falls, people buy more. Excuse me. So looking at this, as the price falls down to people, to we go out to the demand curve touch and go down you're like John we've already done this and yes we have now why is this called a movement because we started off here on this demand curve and we move down the existing demand curve to there. The demand curve itself has not changed, only the price has changed. So we're moving along a static or constant demand curve. So a movement is only ever caused by a change in price, and why? The demand curve doesn't change, just the price changes, and that causes us to move along the existing demand curve from there down to there in this case. Okay, and a movement up the demand curve. Well, as price rises, we move up to a higher price at price P2, go across the demand curve, touch it and go down, and we get this lower quantity than was bought before at price P1, uh, which is Q2. Now, why is this called a movement? Well, the demand curve again has not changed. Only the price of the good has changed. So therefore, it's called a movement because when the price changes, we move up a static demand curve. The demand curve doesn't move, just the price changes. So a movement again is only ever caused by a change in the selling price of the good itself and the demand curve doesn't change. We can see it stays in the same place and all we're doing is as a result of the increase in price in this example we are moving up the existing and constant and steady demand curve from here up to here. Guys uh, thank you so so much for watching. I really hope this helps and I do look forward to seeing you in the next video.